Fuadi are back on Behind the Gloves with another interview. I'm joined by the one and only Tunde Ajay here in London uh, for the press conference with Anthony Yard and Dex Spellman. Good fight uh, for Anthony to come back and show his skills back in the UK. Obviously, he had one fight um, in Spain, but we didn't really get to see anything of it. Um, but exciting times. Yeah, it's, it's great for me. It's great for the viewers. Um, the beast is back. The beast from the east. <laughs> and uh, yeah, great opponent. Dex Bowman is, is no pushover. You know, he's not coming to lay down. And uh, we prepared well. And uh, as long as, you know, in, from my perspective, as long as we prepare well, I never worry about nothing. Um, Anthony a few times said that uh, with Lind Lyndon Arthur's performance against Dick that he would have gone for the stoppage. What did you, what did you rate uh, Lyndon's performance that night? Hold on one sec. Dream it, believe it, become it. <laughs> Let's not forget that <laughs> in the little shadow box before. <laughs> um, of, uh, of Dick's performance or... Lyndon, well, again, the focus is not Lyndon. The focus for this fight is Dex Bowman. And uh, I actually give Dex... Uh, um, you know, a, a good six, seven out of ten. Because, as I said before, it wasn't for the want of him not wanting to engage and fight. He was the one who pressed the fight, the whole fight. You know, and and showed that he he's he can do that for twelve rounds. And I, I, you know, everyone's talking about the 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 Lyndon Arthur fight, but they're forgetting also the Shaq and Peters fight, where he again pressed Shaq and Peters all the way. So Deck is not a, a pushover, and as I said, I've said it, I'm, I've not taken him lightly. We've not prepared like we're taking him lightly because we never do that anyway. Uh, but yeah, credit to Deck for taking this fight. Uh, now also I want to talk to you about a few things that came out this week, uh, and it, it kind of doesn't involve Anthony, but I, I was thinking about it. There's a, a new weight division being talked about, the new weight division being okay. talked about called the Super Cruiserweight Division. Uh, the WBC are coming out about it. Uh, Tony Bell has been speaking about it as he's part of the committee. Um, did that catch your eye? What do you think about that division? And Anthony could potentially, you know, go up to that division, uh, go up to the Cruiserweight Division should, should a lot of the bigger Cruiserweights move up to the Super Cruiserweight Division. Question, what weight is the Super Cruiserweight? But Cruiserweight is not 190. Cruiserweight is 200 pounds. So they take it down. So, so, so you will have, so, well, no, you have the light heavyweight, which is 175, then you have cruiserweight, which is 200, and then you have. So one will be cruiserweight, One night will be the cruiser now, okay. And then two, from 190 to 220, Yes. Yes. Well, that's still a lot. The, the, I mean, I haven't even. This is the first time I'm actually thinking about it, but it still doesn't make sense <laughs> because between feather and super feather, there's four pounds. So, so what advantage does someone have if you're either going up to a weight class where there's a twenty or thirty pound difference, for or against? So, I think that people haven't really thought about this the way they should think about it. If there's gonna be a a, a, um, a twenty thirty pound disparity in between the weights then there should be that for the lower weights or it should be a, uh, there should be some equality in terms of the weight division so you, there's no easy way around it so all you do is continue to just have fantasy weight classes if it's, it's got to be one rule for everyone not one, not one rule for someone one for, this is why lighter weights can go through the weights but then when you get to a certain weight class like heavyweight you're kind of like in no man's land because even from 175 to 200 that's a massive jump 25 do you know what 25 pounds of weight is let me throw 25 pounds of weight in your head then you see the difference so i just think it's nonsense i just think it's nonsense they just they just leave it as it is and you know uh, unfortunately that's the way the, the the cookie crumbles it adds more belts obviously to the to the whole situation as well <laughs> we don't need no more belts it's too much belts. It's becoming a joke. This is why you have people from different sports, or not even sports, from entertainment, from other, believing they can become a boxer. I just think that it's kind of making a mockery of the sport, you know, and I just think there just has to be some, you know, someone has to get a hold of it. And I, I guess if there's more belts, then I guess there has to be more revenue. <laughs> uh, but 
you know, listen, boxing has always been a, a blue collar sport. You know, people work hard to pay for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 pound tickets. And then when you're starting to say now, all right, so now we're gonna, now there's no crowds and it's on pay-per-view with more new belts, more titles, more champions, because one person can't have all the belts unless there's just like the old days. And so it's a very, um, it's a very um, broad topic and a, a massive subject that maybe I think we need to sit down, not rush, you know, but it's good the conversation has started, definitely. Uh, now I want to talk to you about something else as well. You guys obviously went over to Russia, you did your thing, came up short, but you made no excuses about it. There's obviously a lot of things that could have been said, but you know, you took the experience from it. But talking about heavyweights, we obviously saw early in the year, Wilder and Fury go at it. Straight after the fight, there was things about Wilder's vest and all that, 45 pounds. Now, one of his team, uh, well, someone from his team has come out and said that he had a bicep injury going into the fight. Um, well, at this point, what do you think? Do you think it's sensible to come out with all these things or just take it on the chin and be like, all right, we lost, we move on? Because that, that's what you guys are doing. Well, it builds up the, <laughs> the rematch, the trilogy. We're talking about it. So, listen, it's almost going back to when David A spoke about his toe. It's, it's still a talking point. And I guess anything that you can do to drum the attention of the people, but they're fighters. Deontay Wilder's a fighter. You know, um, he, I think he knows that he lost to the better man on the night. So, and I don't think he'll be taking the rematch or the third fight any more different to how he did the other fights. I think now he realizes he's not invincible, it may make him train even harder. And the excuses, they're just excuses. That's who they are. Finally, I want to take your thoughts. Uh, obviously, you you um, manage fighters as well as coach them. I want to take your thoughts on a bit of a situation that opened up this morning about Canelo Alvarez and his whole situation. So basically, what's happened is Canelo is apparently going to be taking uh, uh, Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya to court because obviously the situation that's come out is that uh, the zone unhappy with the opponent he's picking. I think it was the old room. They wanted a more recognised opponent, but obviously in the contract they didn't say about anything about taking certain opponents. Um, if you were in such a situation, how do you go about it and what's your sort of reaction to the whole thing? Well, it's points of law. <laughs> That's why you got a lawyer. <laughs> Canelo don't know that about it. But obviously his lawyers have picked up on that point of the contract, which was, wasn't in there, but for unfortunate, unfortunately for the rest of us, now that's going to be in every contract. <laughs> that's written here forth. But um, he's got a right, absolutely. You know, why, why should he take a pay cut? Why should he take a pay cut? Because, okay, so the gate receipts are not going to be there. Well, then somebody, you know, that's the risk as a promoter. So you have to take the knock as the promoter. I don't think it's going to affect the amount of people that tune in to watch the fight, whether it's behind closed doors or what have you. I just think that Canelo's standing firm. And, he, and that's what happens. When you're the ace, when you are the proper A side, when you are Mr. Boxing, you call the shots. Floyd Mayweather was in that same position. And uh, many people hated for it. You know, people that he dealt business with, they wasn't happy. But that's what happens. You pay the cost to be the boss. <laughs> So that's it. All right, finally, as uh, Anthony's coach, what are we expecting on Saturday night? What type of performance exactly? Let's break it down. <laughs> Beautiful boxing. Beautiful boxing. You know, it, you, you know me, and I'm not into disrespecting opponents. I've just never been like that. I've just always said what has always been the case with Anthony, and that's knockout. I don't train anyone for anything other than a knockout. And if we don't get the knockout, we're upset because we know the people at home are going to be upset because they want to see entertainment. So in our mind, it's always the same thing. Entertainment, knockout, lions in the camp. We don't get weak, we get deep. Turn up, show up, blow up. <laughs> Hey Fi fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and do so by clicking this icon right here and hit the bell button so you can get notified every time we upload a new video. And we also have a free app available on iTunes and Google Play. So make sure you go ahead and download that. Bye Fi fans.